Welcome. Today we're going to talk about customer portals. In this video, we're first going to go through the basics of the customer portals, the what and the why, and then we'll go through a demonstration of setting one up within Zoho Creator. So first, let's talk about what customer portals are. And you're probably familiar with them even if you're not familiar with that nomenclature. Uh, you probably log into one, um, if not daily or weekly, at least monthly. Uh, it's used quite often in the banking industry as well as retail uh, to basically allow their users or their customers uh, to log into their system and see some portion of the information that they have at their hands. So if you think about in the banking industry, you're logging in, seeing your accounts, seeing um, any additional sort of like loans or credit lines that you have uh, attached to those accounts. Uh, for a retailer like Nike on the screen, you would log in, be able to see um, different products, create orders, uh, you know, they would store your information, your shipping, your billing, um, so that the next time that you wanted to make an order, it was all there, it was all easy. Uh, all you had to do was choose the products and then you could get like an order history and everything that you need. Um, you know, Amazon has a customer portal that you're logging into when you're ordering through Amazon. Uh, it's a way for their system to identify you as a user without you being like a real user within their ecosystem. So what is a customer portal? Well, we keep saying customer, but that's not the only way that they're utilized. It's really a gateway um, for any external stakeholder to access uh, information. Um, so in Creator, that can be different applications that you need you know, someone to fill out that could be, you know, dashboards that they need to be able to see, you know, think about your vendors, being able to see your inventory and anticipate the next time that you need an order. Uh, all of that can be achieved through customer portals. So why would you use one? Well, um, beyond the reasons that I just sort of walked through, uh, it's meant for non-employees to access um, data. So, you know, again, Going back to that vendor use case, um, you know, being able to to keep an eye on what your inventory is, being able to anticipate um, when you might need an order, uh, and then you know, being able to see how uh, their products are being sold through you or being utilized by you, uh, just gives them better information into how you're operating and how they can better serve you. Um, so there's quite a few different ways that. Uh, customer portals can be utilized, but it's usually to expose some piece of information or component or form or whatever it may be um, to external users so that they can interact with your company and uh, you can get different processes completed in a much more efficient manner. Customer portal licenses are much cheaper than buying a full creator license, so uh, pricing is definitely another reason why you would use uh, customer portals. And then again, some common uses, order tracking, so your customers logging in, being able to see where their order is, the status, quote statuses for estimates, as well as uh, review processes for um, different um, use cases that, that might require them. So now that we've sort of talked about the what and the why, let's talk about the different types of portals. So Zoho Creator actually offers three different types. Uh, the first one is public, and basically that's exactly as it sounds. Anybody who has an access to that link uh, can basically sign up and get whatever information, whatever component, whatever form, whatever you have curated for that user to receive when they log in they will get that information. A private portal, that's one where the admin has to invite all of the users. So a user cannot sign up on their own, they're basically invited, and then the admin knows all of the users that have access to it, whereas on the public side, you know, the admin may not know that some people have um, signed up if they don't have like notifications turned on. The last version is kind of a mix of the two and probably the one that's most often used uh, at Zoho. 
or for creator uh, solutions. This one gives you that flexibility of having the, the portal exposed like as a public link so that people can sign up, but they actually don't get access to anything that you have curated for them until you as the admin approve them. So they get to sign up, they get to you know go through all of those to get access, and then you're making that final decision as to whether um, they need access and get to apply um, permissions so that you can control exactly what they're able to see. Portal users, you can actually add portal users individually or import them. This can be done with every single type of portal. It doesn't matter if it's public, private, or restricted. Um, but most often, if you're importing them, it's going to be on that private side where you're really controlling the users that are getting added. Once they've been added to the customer portal, they get an invitation to register for that portal. Uh, once they have the invite, they visit the customer portal, they sign up, they put in their password, um, they give all of the uh, additional information that's necessary, and then once they are um, registered for the portal, then admins can apply different permissions that they may have on it. So the same portal could be used by your customers, by your vendors, by um, shareholders, whoever needs to see that data. And you can just have different permission sets, which is your access to components set up for those different groups of people. Uh, again, customer implies an individual is not part of the admins organization, but you know, it doesn't need to be a customer in the traditional sense. It's just anybody who maintains a working relationship with the organization. We talked about suppliers, vendors, um, everything like that. And then upon having the permissions applied, they're given access to view the different components for those permission sets, but they will not be able to edit anything that they have access to view. It's really only the visibility of the data, not being able to edit any of the records that exist. By default, portal users only have access to see their own data. You could turn that off. So give them a more global view of data, uh, allow them to see other users information. Portals, however, have no role hierarchy. So you can't limit it based on their level of access. Uh, it's really based on how you've curated that information. We're going to go through a demo of setting up a customer portal for our app here, um, Zilker Home Appliances. The purpose of our portal will be to capture customer feedback utilizing our feedback form. So we have our feedback form here. We've got the name, email address, contact number, address, rating for experience, rating for products, rating for service. So we can just expose this to them as is, as a form, but I think it's a little bit cleaner if we actually embed it on a page just to make it a little bit nicer. So we'll call this customer feedback and we'll create our page. Just drag a panel over, delete the number, call this Zilker customer feedback. Let's make it bold, make it a little bit larger say 33 and let's change up the look a little bit let's give it some blue all right so we've got our banner we can now go to our form choose our feedback and we can put that in here now I'm gonna hit allow public access I'm not sure it's completely necessary with the customer portal, but I do it all the time, just out of habit. I'm gonna hit done. The next thing that I'm gonna wanna do is go to settings and go to portal user permissions. And we're gonna wanna add a permission set for the portal. So let's call this feedback. And this will be portal permission set to capture customer 
feedback. We'll then go in here. Um, so for our permissions, it's actually broken up between some of the components. So the first set that you see here are all of our forms. These relate directly to the forms that we built within the solution. If we click on view, these are all of our reports under the view category. But here are all the pages. So if we click on customer feedback, we hit save. The only thing that we're going to share with this feedback permission group is that customer feedback page that we created. So now that we have the permissions, let's go out to our portal and we'll create a new one. So here we're going to choose our app. We're then going to specify a default domain. So we'll call this Zilker Appliance. We'll choose what portal type we want. Let's go with restricted. We'll notify admin, notify portal user. We can give a default permission set or we can leave it blank. Uh, we're just going to leave it as feedback and then we'll disable their ability to change their email addresses. So once they're signed up with that email, that's the email that they're going to use. If they need to change it, they can contact us. So we'll hit create new and now we've created our new portal. We'll go in here, we'll copy our portal to this. We'll then throw it up in our URL and we'll sign up as a random user. So let's say John Doe and we're John Zilker at proton dot me had to set up a um, throwaway email on proton just because we need to validate for us to be able to see exactly what the customer uh, or the user who goes through the portal was able to see so I'm gonna use my captcha I'm gonna hit sign up and now it sent uh, that approval so just give me a minute and I'll get it approved and then show you exactly what that looks like from uh, the user's end. So I've got my email. Click here. We'll put in a password. All right. Create. So they've logged in now but we haven't approved them as a user. So this is all they see at the moment. So now if we go back to our admin and we refresh the page, you can see we now have one portal user listed, but because it's a restricted one, we actually have statuses. So here it says there's no portal users found, but it's no portal users in approved status. So we need to go here to pending. We can then see the user that we just signed up as. We can click on that and we can hit approve. So now that he's been approved, he can come over here, refresh, and they don't like it. So great to make a mistake on a demo, but I think it's a good way to illustrate things. Uh, because we haven't shared the form with our page permissions, it's not giving us access to it. So we only on our portal users actually chose to give them access to the customer feedback page. We actually need to give them access to the feedback form as well. So let's go back. Let's update. Now we can go back to our form. And now John Doe can enter any of the information that he needs to and submit it back to us. So to recap, uh, in this video, we went through the basics of customer portals, understanding what we mean when we say customer portal, as well as how the concept can be applied to different types of businesses. 
and we've gone through a demonstration of setting it up within Zoho Creator. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Thank you.